What's good, everybody? This is Preston, lifelong adventurer and travel YouTuber. And I'm Ryan, the travel photographer, here to capture moments worth saving. And this is Adventures with Pictures podcast, bringing all those travel tips, horror stories, and just all around travel experiences. This is your podcast to soften those travel blues every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Now let's get started and hear from my guest today. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is uh, another episode of Adventures with Pictures. I'm Mr. Travels. And I got my best friend, Ryan, in the building. What's going on? And today we got a special guest, my homegirl, Courtney. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. <laughs> All day. So you can already tell where she's from. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. The good state of uh, Texas, you know, Houston. So, yeah. So, so how are things going uh, during this COVID season? How are things going out there? Today's episode, uh, we want to, you know, talk about, you know, Houston, Texas. Right. Uh, that I've never been, but I do plan on going, and I got a personal tour guide, you know, when I come. Uh, um, uh, but yeah, like, I definitely want to hear about Texas. I know, Ryan, you said you've never been to um, Houston. Yeah, I, I've never been to Houston, but I, I will say, uh, and uh, I hope it doesn't sound like awkward or anything, Courtney, but every time, like a, like a, like a rap video from a, a Houston rapper come on, they make Houston sound so dope to visit, like whether it's <laughs> They do like Slim, Slim Thug, Bun B. Uh, they got another. They got a market, right? Yeah, yeah. They be like, I'm from Texas. I be like, Yo, Texas look fun. I gotta go. Like, it you look fly. I be like, That's why I was. I think I told her the other day. I was like, I heard y'all Bama's be like riding horses everywhere, and she quickly was like, First of all, what you ain't going to do now. <laughs> But That's I was the first like, thing everybody want to say. Oh, horses! Don't y'all be riding horses? Oh well, my. Like, what do you think Houston is? Like, of course we're in Texas, but you gotta know like every place, like every place in the, in like all the states have their like MLK street, which is in the hood. You have your yeah. nightmares, you have your, you know, every every place has the same thing, but come on now. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing, and, and, I, and I, I get exactly what you're saying. Cause me being born and raised in St. Louis, people always think, first of all, people don't know geography. Cause everybody, they might. <laughs> Some people fell asleep in my class. They be like, I be like, what man, where you from? I be like, man, St. Louis. Man, shit, I love Louisiana. Damn. <laughs> what? Like, you just put me in a whole other state? <laughs> wow. So, yeah. um, you know, I always got to correct that point, but um, people always think, you know, because of Nelly saying country grandma, and, and they always think it's like just trees and leaves. It's, and tumbleweeds just blowing. Through. I'm like, no. Nah. I'm, like, I'm like, St. Louis is a city, like you know, concrete, concrete jungle. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, uh, but all the like Africa. When you when we think about Africa, you you only see what you see on TV. Yeah. You know yeah. But you don't know, like they got so many nice beaches over there, so mm -hmm. many beautiful women, and people mm -hmm. are you know doing good over there. Yeah, right. and, and that's the thing, and that's the reason why I think is one of the things that Ryan and myself, you know, created this podcast. Mm -hmm. And myself doing my little travel blogging is because, you know, to show people like, yo, like, you know, what you see in movies or, you know, magazines or whatever the case may be, it's not 100% true. You know, you, got, you need to go visit the place before you start talking about something that you have no idea what you're talking about. I'm and, so thankful for you too, man, because like for me, when, I, when we were living in Germany, like, you know, we traveled and I've been to you know, a lot of places overseas, but, you know... While I was over there, and I let me and my friends were like, oh, okay, let's go to Portugal, or let's go to Paris. You know, you have YouTubers who have already been there and have, have seen and done a lot of things. They they give you tips and traveling tips, how to save money, how to do this and how to do that, what hotels to get. And it's like, dang, like oh, I'm so thankful for YouTube and y'all's channel as well, man. Getting this advice, pretty much, you know, like tips and hearing what other people's you know state or country is like is amazing. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's what we try to do. You know what I'm saying? We try to get his old free 99. Mm -hmm. Don't cost you nothing to listen, you know? And uh, um, and like I said, man, it's just like I said, we want to just get rid of some of those stereotypes as far as what people think they heard or know. Or yes. <laughs> you know, yes. Me, you're asking me on this, you know, we come to Houston, you know? So, so first I want to ask, you know, what's the, the environment, like the weather and, you know, stuff like that? What is it like in, um, in Houston, you know? on the average well let me put out first that um i've been in the military for seven years so i just moved back to houston um may 2019 
Okay. So I'm getting back, you know, I can made it to, you know, being in Houston, but um, it's very hot. It is very hot. Um, almost like all year round, because you do have, you know, you know, your seasons and whatnot. But the hottest it gets, like in the summertime, it gets to the triple digits. It gets to like you know, 102. <laughs> <That's> enough. <laughs> Look, look, you take a shower and you go outside and you have to go right back in. You start sweating. You're like, man, <laughs> it's bad. It's, we have humidity. Um, It gets really hot. Oh, you got humidity? I thought, oh, okay. okay. For, for Christmas, for Christmas, like, I always, like, I'm always, like, in a short sleeve shirt Christmas. Like, yeah. But it doesn't start getting cold here until, like, February, March time frame. Okay. Um, that's when it starts to get like cold. But other than that, like Houston, we, we have we have nice weather. We have really nice weather. Yeah. Well, generally speaking, it's you know it's it's doable, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the highest it gets is like 102, 103. I, I never seen it like one hundred four, one hundred five. Never that. But okay. it stays generally. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> you know that degree, you know, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's still hot as hell though. And you said it's humid. See, I was. If I don't know going outside when it's hot. I don't. I don't. Pretty well. You know, I don't mind dry heat. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind. I mean, I can do it, but I ain't going looking for it. You know. Right. And, um. You know, I've been deployed. A, you know, a couple of times and. It, it, you know, that that yes yes. So I didn't see one forty one thirty. You'd be like, damn. Whoa. Seen it? Where did he get one forty at? Shit, I was in Iraq. I was in Iraq, and then like Kuwait, it gets like one twenties, one thirties. Man, man, when I was in Afghanistan, luckily I had night shift. I asked to be on. Uh, I asked to be on um, uh, the ECP gate, uh-huh. and I asked to be at the tower. And I, my shift was from ten o'clock at night to six o'clock in the morning. Oh yeah, you I, put it all together, yeah. When I was when I was when I would get off shift, everybody was walking around with the raccoon. Yeah, <laughs> the raccoon eyes, man. I was like, "Woo, so glad that's not for me." Yeah, but see, Afghanistan don't get hot like that because you know it's more mountainous and uh, you know whatever. But like when I was, I mean, depending on depending on where you are or where you yeah. were at, um, and you probably was in uh, calf, right? Maybe calf area. No, I wish. Um, I was at. Fob Walton, which nobody's ever heard of. Yeah, I know Fob Walton. <laughs> yeah. So um I, I did a little time at Fob Walton, but um did a whole little uh Kandahar area. Um, uh, yeah. oh, yeah, I've been around for a couple places. Look, I see. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like so yeah, it's, oh yeah. Cause you had that big ass mountain out there. Yeah, so it, it got cold out there, but it didn't get oh, yeah, yeah, it got cold, like close to like snow and cold. Like yeah, it got oh, cold. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, there's a little story. Let me get back to Houston. But That's we, was, we was at um, this, I was at Five Walton and um, in the tents. Well, I guess the, the the transit tents or whatever the hell they were. Yeah. And um, literally, like the generator went out, so we had like no heat in the tent. I'm t- I mean, this half the tent. It just you know, AC. Man, oh my god! I thought I was like, death is coming tonight. <laughs> I'm like, come on, dog. <laughs> you know damn well you weren't gonna make it. <laughs> it, it, it was like it was like the Game of Thrones when they say winter is coming. It was like death. Is yeah, coming. yeah. Winter, dog, I'm telling you, the Night King was dog. The Night King was in our tent. He's blowing on my neck like any day now you're gonna die. <laughs> like, um, I ended up. Uh, I'm sorry. It, it got so cold that I left my cot because we had to sleep on cots. Right. See, Ryan has never been in the military, so you don't know the the pain oh. of sleeping in the cot. So, oh. I this was in a car one time. I saw in a car one time. This dude said one time. Yeah. So, I got from the car. I got fully dressed to walk to the building I worked at, and I just slept in the office because they got got heat. Yeah, I was like, people do that. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's that's my little cold story. You know, people would be like, "Have you been cold?" Shit, hell yeah, I've been cold before. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, yeah. So, like I said about the Texas. I like to say, I'm very surprised about the humidity. I thought mostly Texas. I've only been to Texas a few times. I thought it was more dry, but the only places I've been to Texas was um, like Dallas, and I've been to uh, El Paso. Mm-hmm. Those are the only places I've been. But I definitely 
want to go back to uh, when I go back to but go to San Antonio and like Houston and stuff. I want to go to Austin too. I hear Austin's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah, you remember when I, cause when I went to San Antonio? I told you it was a different type of hot out there when I went to San Antonio, bro. Like. <laughs> I'm gonna come out I was like you know. I gave you that warning. You go to you go to at least when I went to San Antonio. You really got to make sure your hot spots is washed, bro. You can't just roll out of the bed and, and go outside, though. They're gonna be all good. Yeah. Like oh, I took a shower last night. Nah. Okay, do another. No, that don't yeah. work. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do another. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Them, them, them underarms will be singing if you just roll out of the house, thinking you straight. Mm -mm. Yeah, I mean, hey, hygiene is uh is 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 life. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. But yeah, that's that's yeah. Oh my God, I can't. Hygiene is a whole nother episode. Another topic, right? That's a, a whole other topic. Cause I done seen some wild things in my life. I'd be like, so you just gonna wake up, huh? You just gonna <laughs> throw your boots on and just walk about this thing. Awesome. Said fuck water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So okay. So okay. So Tom. So I don't want to speculate because you know you already corrected me on the horses thing. So obviously there's no horses that's roaming the streets of Houston. But yeah, like I say, I, I just think that you know y'all y'all have y'all y'all do have your own identity. So yeah. it's not like an average like okay, you know any other city like that is Houston. Like you know what I'm saying when you hear say certain music or whatever, and I think that's dope to have your own identity. You know what I'm saying? Like to I know we're gonna talk more about Houston, but like to give like people like a perspective from from like of course i'm black you know from a black person perspective what houston is like typical like the typical person is kind of like meg the sally like she from the hood but she's relatable you know what i'm saying like what she talks about in her music um growing up living in the hood how powwow talks how um slim thug talks about it um chameleonaire zero like how all of them talk about it, like that's really like the 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 just of like the people, like the culture, like they just chill, we real chill, we real laid back. We not like it's totally opposite from New York, like how you were talking, you know, before. But yeah, it's totally like a different pace. New York is fast paced. Houston is very slow, chill, laid back. You know, you'll probably go in Walmart, you see somebody with a bonnet on their head. <laughs> A bonnet on their head, slippers on, like just roll out of bed. Like people are so laid back and chill here. Like, okay. but yeah, yeah, oh, that's, that's all right. I like down earth people. You gonna say so, real? Oh yeah, I was just about to say yeah, yeah. Like what what she was saying. Like, like for maybe you, you know, me and you were both into music, and I'm I'm not sure if you're really into music as well, Quentin. But it sounds like you are, especially when you dropping names like Zero. I was like, oh, she she knows, she know about some hip hop. <laughs> but, <laughs> she knows. Yeah, she she knows. But I swear, like, there's, there's like a like a handful of songs that I've heard in my lifetime. But after I heard, it, I was like, dog, I gotta go visit that particular city. Like, like, uh, for example, when Ja Rule and Fat Joe and uh, Jada Kids did the "I'm from New York," I was like, that's dope. I wouldn't mind, you know, seeing what that New York culture is like. But it was, it was like a few years ago. But that song, that, that's where like the all star of like Houston folks on one record. It was like Bun B. Yeah, yeah. It, I think I know what you're talking about. I can't I, remember. Uh, it. I'm from Texas. I was like, I gotta go to Texas, man. I was yeah. like, I'm from Texas. Yeah, the yeah. like the culture and what you hear in the music, the mm -hmm. food, the big booty women, um, the the southern hospitality that we have here. Um, I mean, you get your few where you know some people just can have a bad day. You know what I'm saying? They don't really show you or speak to you. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's everywhere, but um, um. Houston, it just being in the South Pier, we're just known for, you know, our Southern hospitality. So um, I would say a lot of what you hear, um, you know, t what typically goes on in your in your hood, smoking, drinking, talking, having fun, having parties, having, you know, block parties. Um, that's, that's like, that, I don't see too many people outside anymore. Um, right. But that's how, like, back in the days, like, in the 90s and the early 2000s, like, people would be out on the street. You know, my uncle, he would have his uh, car radio turned up, and me and my aunt, we'd be outside dancing. And <laughs> oh, okay. He, he always, he all oh, my uncle, he always, that, that man can throw down. I have, um, my dad's side is, like, you know, Louisiana's, you know, side or whatever. So my uncle, like, he'll always do, like, a, 
either a crawfish bowl, he'll make some jambalaya or he'll you know, throw some food on a grill or okay. what, whatever. Like, yeah, like it, it's cookouts, cookouts, mm-hmm. barbecue. Texas is definitely up for barbecue too. Like, you know, we home with the, the big steaks and stuff like that. Everything's bigger in Texas. I was about to say, that's the saying that they say. Everything's bigger they in say. Texas. That's right, right. what they say. And I'm going to go find out next year too. Yeah, yeah. I try. Well, I, and I, I, I know it seems like most of my questions are like hip hop based. I, I guess I just can't help it, but no, you're good. yeah, you know, like how I don't know if you've been to the, the, the DC, Maryland area at all, but you know, I just, I just went. Yes. You went. Okay. Well, you know, like DC, you know, has like a, a go go culture. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of go go music. Don't bring up go go. She was like, go go. What is go go? She's like, go go. What the hell is that? <laughs> but that's right. I know what it is. Right. She was like, go go. <laughs> she was like, get out of my face. You come around the cages, right? We're, you know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. He didn't yeah. say it, but in my mind, that's what she said. That's what I read. Yeah, Cody, but, like, she's like, get that go go out my playlist out here. Yeah, so. Bro, I mean, you know, <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, go go is life for here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, yeah. Like, right? Well, yeah, so like, you know, so like, go go is real big in the DC, Maryland, you know, Northern Virginia area. But, but like, so my question is like, like the like DJ, there's like the whole chopped and screw music. Is like how big is that in like the Houston area or just Texas alone? Or if you're familiar with, you know that type of style. No, definitely, definitely. Oh yeah, man, I grew up on that type of music. But um, since I've been back, I haven't heard it too much because even just outside just now, I heard somebody had they. Uh, they, you know how people you ride the hood, they get their bass bumping. Mm-hmm. Somebody just now was just bumping that, but now more so people, I guess, I don't know, I guess it's because I'm older and maybe like the younger culture now, the millennials, they're listening to a lot of this other different type of style of rapping. Mumble rapping all that. And stuff like that. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I hear more so of that, like the little babies and baby and stuff like that. Um, you know, a lot of guys listen to not too many people listen to like the old school stuff, but um, I haven't really heard too much Chopper School, but I noticed that people even who are not from Houston, like a lot of celebrity, you know, different type of rappers or singers, mm-hmm. they'll put, they'll sample a little bit of the, the screw in their music. Like I know Eric, well, Erica Badu's from Dallas. Um, right. um, <clears throat> Drake. Mm-hmm. Drake, he puts the, the chop and screw, you know, in yeah. his music a little bit. I was like, okay. Like, you know, when I was in the military, it kind of brought me back to, like, feel like I was at home. Like, you know, you kind of miss home where you're in the military. So when I was in Germany, I had a friend that I liked to listen to a, a lot of Drake. Mm-hmm. And, you know, every once in a while here, you know, he'll have a little, a little part, a little section where he's some chop and screw. And I'll be at the way. Wait a minute. And I was like, dang, I miss I miss being home, man. I miss yeah. so much, so much love, so much love. Yeah, I mean, um, that's how I felt about because I went from the military from the whatever. So, uh-huh. um, you know, when I left, you know, early two thousands, I was like, you know, that was life. You know, the you know the the club scene. You know, the type of, obviously it was early two thousands, so the music was a lot different back then. Ooh, it was live. Yeah. Uh-huh. On that same note, we was really heavy into go go's. Like, <laughs> you know, catch this go go, whatever, and listen to that, that style of music, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, obviously, I went in the military. You know, that's, that's, it's literally just this area to listen to go go. Yeah. It's very rare that you're going to find somebody that even knows what go go is. Like, you know, like I said, you didn't really know. But, um, you know, and then it's like, and so I had this, you know, I, st- I still be playing Go-Go on any duty station I've ever been, you know, whether mm-hmm. I'm in Korea or if I'm here, I'd be like, oh, Go-Go. And, yeah. and then, you know, every once in a while you catch that, somebody be like, yo, man, what you know about that? Then, you know, you get that conversation going. Mm-hmm. But then coming back after the military, I don't even, uh, you know, I'm out there. You know, I'm, first of all, I'm out of the age group. Two, so much stuff has changed since I've left that it's just not the same. Like, I used to think, you know, I used to think a lot of things, but it's just not the same being, just being back home. Now, especially, I live in Virginia now. I've never lived in Virginia until, you know, after the military. So right. I'm just so far removed from that, you know, that lifestyle or whatever. I don't even know they still play go-go. Sometimes I have to be, like, reminded, you know. <laughs> so I'll be like, wow. 
you know, just because people didn't, you know, fell off, died, or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. it's not as big. As, I don't think it's as big as it used to be. Obviously, for me, like I, I grew up, I, for me, I grew up on Houston music. You know, I'm not Houston music. I you know grew up with just this in my own little bubble when I was in Houston. So when I joined the military, and then my first station was Washington. When I heard their music, I was like, oh, what is this? Like, that was a culture shock for me. When I heard the West Coast music, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> but I was so close-minded, you know what I'm mm. saying? At that time, I was young. I joined the military when I was 20. Okay. Uh, 2021. So, you know, I'm like I'm from Houston. You know, y'all heard of, you know, I've heard the music and stuff like that. And so when you go from one extreme to the next, you're just like, you know, what is <laughs> What is this? Yeah, but, I mean, now it's like I'm kind of growing, you know, like a, a kind of love for it, I guess. Well, love, yeah. for, love for what? West Coast music? I, it's I music. Like love for it, but I, I'm growing to like it. Yeah. Oh, okay. West Coast music, yeah. Right. See, that's right. the beauty of, like, you know, me, like, being born in St. Louis, raised in St. Louis. Because in St. Louis, obviously, since we're the Midwest, you know, you can go either direction as far as the music goes. Uh -huh. So I grew up more on down south slash west coast music. You know, that's the eighties, the nineties. That's all I listened to. I love eighties music. Woo! Yeah, so that's I love music that, and that's where I grew up on. You know, I have older uh, you know, older sibling, older cousins. So they used to introduce me to a lot of, you know, a lot of that stuff. Yeah. And then when I moved to the East Coast, uh, I used to live in Jersey, I was like, man, what the hell y'all talking about? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I just wasn't used to like I said I didn't grow up on Biggie or anything like that. So what? like yeah. when I when I when I first started really listening heavy to Biggie, I was like, damn, he is kind of dope. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just went in because I was more Tupac. I was like, oh, if I got to pick a side, oh, I'm riding with Pac all day. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I, I felt like I was a little I'm like I was vested into this war. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like the heck like, oh, You got to pick a side, you know. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like so that's you know like I say, and then just like I said, this military will get you out your comfort zone anyway. Just yes. you have to be around other people, whether your roommates or just meeting new people every time you go to a different duty station. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that's one of the best things that the military does provide that it makes you more real rounded. And and I know for a fact a lot of stuff I would not be listening to or even doing until you know military type deal. So. Mm -hmm. um, I am thankful for that. But okay, so uh chop this crew. I, I hate um I maybe I just I, I hate oh my god. It depends. Sometimes people so draw hard. it out too much. Some of them is some of it's good. You know, I, you, you I gotta know. listen to maybe or maybe you need to do a little playlist for us because I'm talking about the ones I be here, I'll be like, bro, can you get to the next verse? No, nah, like, I was on twelve minutes. I'm like, I, 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 I ain't gonna front. Like, I think you gotta be in a certain type of mood, mood, mood for um, chopping screw music. Like, if you're a little tipsy, you know what I'm saying? You, you, it, yeah, you know, maybe, little, uh, I just yeah. Like, you never listen to it when you go into the club. Like, you listen nah. to it like when you're leaving the club and you, you know, wanting to wind down. You just want to chill. Exactly. That's when they be doing the swinging and stuff like that. Like, yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe yeah. I've been doing it wrong, going to work. Yeah, you know, I, exactly. I, 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 you're like, what the hell are they talking about? This. <laughs> All right, now nah, you don't do that. Like, it's, it's almost like when we first, when we were at Morgan, we, you know, we go to the, the the clubs in Baltimore. I can't, I can't stand club music. But oh, the house music. music. Oh, I don't the, like music. Yeah, the house, like it's time for the percolator and all hey, those. Stuff. It's time for the percolator. Yeah. Hey, I ain't gonna lie to you now. <laughs> hey, back hey, the club music was bang. I don't care what you say. Man, I hated it at first, but it's one of those things. You have to be in the culture to, to understand appreciate it. it. It's like when I moved to so I moved to Maryland first. When I moved to Maryland, literally, I hated go-go music. I was like, dog, this is this is trash. <laughs> out. But I got so used to it because I was playing football, sports and stuff. So everybody in the locker room was listening to it or you know, whatever. And then eventually you just like, oh, okay. And then I went to my first go go. I was like, oh yeah, this are this are tight. But you know what I'm saying? It's it took all that to make me like it or appreciate it. Right. And the same thing with club music. You know, when I first heard, I was like, man, what is what is this? You know, but then like you move to Baltimore, the next thing you know, all the clubs are playing club music or the radio stations or whatever. So you just kind of 
start, it's to start growing on you. So I'm assuming that's the same way if I moved to Houston. I'd be like, oh, okay, well, I probably hate it at first. And then eventually if I, you know, hear it enough, I might be like, oh, okay, I can give it a chance, you know, so. Right. Well, when I moved to, when I got stationed in Seattle, I still haven't gotten used to like the, like, not only the music, but also like the people and how they talk. They said hella a lot. I'm like, hella. Like, <laughs> I never heard that until I went to the West Coast. I lived into the West Coast, but yeah, I can't give it some of their language. And, yeah, yeah, and the music, like, nah. She said, "Not nah, ain't you." Hey, like I said, you just got to you know get used to listen to, listen to a couple more songs. Go. I got some West Coast songs for you now. They they, no, they yeah, might be a little older. They might be a little older though. Mm-hmm. I know you appreciate it because it's more you know it's lyrics and not just. Well, I, I, I like but I'll say, I like Snoop. I like Snoop. Definitely a Tupac fan. But Tupac, he was from New York, right? I didn't say from. I would say born. He was born. Yeah, born there. He was born in New York, raised in like Baltimore a little bit. And then he moved to like Oakland, and then that's when he, you know, West Coast. So he was more West Coast than anything, as far as that goes. Oh, so him, Snoop Dogg, Tupac. Um, trying to see if um, Ice Cube, the whole NWA, just that yeah. whole message and what they was talking about, like. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big NWA fan. Yeah. Well, I'm a big. First CD, NWA fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the first CD. <laughs> the first CD was fire. Like, yeah. you know, straight out of Compton, that joint was just hard. Mm-hmm. But you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I just grew up on all that type of stuff. Just older, uh, like I said, older cousins and older brother, whatever. But yeah. um, so let's talk more about what is there to do? Like if somebody had, I don't know, a week in Houston, what would you recommend, you know, they, they do or... Like, you know, when, when it comes down to, like, you know, just excursions, if, if there are excursions, uh, there are, like, different type of events, uh, eateries, you know, like, because I'm starting to get into this food thing or whatever, just trying different things. Yes. Uh, you know, so it's just, like, what is Houston known for when it comes to, like, that type of stuff? Food, excursions, you know, just fun stuff or sightseeing. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Well, I'm an eat, eating type person too. Like, I, I travel for food. Like, <laughs> that's me all day. Like, I'm like, oh, what they got to eat? Like, I, I, I look at their restaurant's menu. Okay. And if they got good food and the dessert is good, oh, yeah, I'm going. But, um, no, so let's see. You would definitely want to go try, like, the big places that you hear about, celebrities talking about, or people talking about, like, where the, like, the main eating places are. So um, the Breakfast Club. Um, you'll see, um, well, I hear a lot of celebrities go there, but also, um, they have good food. I hear the line and the wait is long. It's a long waiting period to get in the breakfast club. But my mom, she said she went and she's been dying to go back since. I think she went like two years ago for her birthday and she has not been back since. Like, um, but yeah, I hear is that I haven't been, um, but I've seen it in the food. It looks, it's Texas size. It's big, it's big plates. Um, <laughs> it looks, but it looks so, it looks so good. Um, turkey leg hut. I'm, so, <laughs> I'm from Houston. So I got people in the military coming, you know, here to visit me and stuff. And I promise to God, the first thing they talk about, oh, can we go to turkey leg hut? I'm like, look, I don't even want to go there. I don't want to, I don't like waiting in lines. Like, right, I, me too. And then it is hot outside too. You know, so you got sweat dripping down your legs and, you know, <laughs> and your underarms and your chest all, you know. So, um, but I waited. <laughs> so what? They had a little uh, sweat stains, you know what I'm saying? Man, you, got, you see people outside fan, <laughs> fan they sales <laughs> and you admit it, like it's, man. But um, I love, I will say, like I said, I got a lot, a lot of my, I've been there twice. A lot of people, um, the military, a lot of my friends want to go there first. Um, but every time I go, I'm glad that I did because the atmosphere, like for me being in the military, I was stationed in so many places where I was out of my element. Like Washington wasn't really like Southern, you no, know, didn't have the Southern culture. Germany definitely didn't have it. Didn't even have a lot of the eating places that I was used to. Right. And then I moved to Georgia, and you know that that's back in my element. And then I got out and moved to um, Florida, 
still out of my element. So um, being at the Turkey Leg Hut, it just, man, it's so much love there, so much culture there. They got a DJ outside. Mm -hmm. um, I, if you eat there, you would want to sit outside. Um, they have like this um, little tent looking thing and they have a lot of different tables that you can um, sit at, but um, they have a DJ out there and then they also have a, a bar outside too. So you can you know, order drinks and stuff, but I, I kid you not, like I still got one of the videos that I took when I was at um, the Turkey Leg Hut. I think that's, um, that song um, by Beyonce came on, um, Before I Let Go. Have y'all heard of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, duh. Um, yo, I swear, the whole outside, everybody just gets up and they start dancing. You see people on the floor twerking and just being around black people in that culture is just it's just it's just so much fun. It's just like you have a good time when you when you go there. Like it's 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 really an experience that like that you just have to experience. Like Mind you, the, the lines, yes, they are long, but the, la the last time I went, it kind of moved fast. Um, but also, like, you kind of want to maybe get there, you know, early, get there, you know, good enough time. Um, mm -hmm. The last time I went, um, 50 Cent, he walked right by me. Oh, wow. I didn't, okay. I did not know that um, he was out there doing a, um, a promotion for, I, I think he's selling liquor or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, I heard a lot of screaming. There's a Cadillac that had been parked at the, the the side of the street for the longest, and it was like this big Cadillac suburban looking car. And was as I was leaving, the person you know he finally got out. I heard a lot of screaming. Like why why is everybody screaming? And so I see this big black nigga just walk by. I'm like, oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why they're screaming. Like I just I just I just kept walking. <laughs> but um, yeah, but um, it, it's so like. It's becoming so well known, so famous. I even seen on Good Morning America, um, they even like featured it on there. And um, like I said, hear a lot of people talking about it. Like I watched um, the Joe Budden podcast, and I like you. Said, we love hip hop music. We like music, so yeah. he talked about a lot of music. So I like him. Mm -hmm. um, but he, even him, talking about man, I gotta go to the Turkey Leg Cut, man. I hear it's good. I hear it's good. <laughs> Man. I had one person say that they that they didn't like it. Somebody said that it was okay. Somebody didn't like. Oh, the the guy said he didn't like that it was falling off the bone. He wanted his to be intact. Oh. <laughs> That's the face that I. Yeah. That means it's good. It's yeah, falling yeah, off, the bone. off the bone. Man, where he from? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where he from. It was one of my homegirls' uh, friends. Oh, he uptight, uh, man. Yeah, he tripping. I'm like, that thing must be good. It man, it's when you get it, it's just so tender, it's so juicy. Like even talking about it now, my mouth is watering. But what they do, they put a big. What they do, they give you like a baking sheet, like a baking silver baking sheet. They put the whole leg on there, and then um, depending on what kind you get, like I think I got the macaroni cheese with seafood in it. Oh, okay. And, um, they just give you the the leg, and then they just pour it all the macaroni and cheese and the, the I think it's like crawfish inside or something like that. And um I don't forgot what the sides are. I think you get like um sweet potato fries or fries or something like that. But um then you, you know eat it with a fork or you can try to pick it up eat it with your hand. But I like the falling off the bone. But okay. I can get I, I guess in his mind he's thinking about like a carnival or something. Like you walking around with like eating up. Yeah. You know? That's probably what he's thinking about, but I mean, the way that these black people make it, whoo, it's to me, it's good to me because mm -hmm. I'm you know, I'm, I'm used to that type of food. But like I say, when he said that, I was like, huh? But he, he, yeah, he shocked me on that one. True, yeah, true. Just the way you described that whole turkey leg is it made me want to go try some when I go go there. Right? Yeah. It's so much fun, like the DJ is live. You know what, for me, what I don't like about DJs was sometimes. When DJs like they don't have a good transition, like you can't just like cut a song off and then just play another one. Like it gotta be smooth. They gotta make sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But this one, it was smooth transition throughout the whole. thing. He had the whole crowd. It's like we were just at a. I felt like we was at a lounge because they do. Oh, they have um hookah there. So I know for the hookah, you know people. Uh, I like hookah, so um they have hookah a bar outside. I've never been inside of the establishment. Mm -hmm. so you can sit inside, but I 
for me, I, I've always said outside that I wouldn't want to go sit inside, especially on a nice day. Yeah. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to sit inside, but every time I went, it was so nice. Um, sometimes, you know, when you're in a crowd with a lot of black people, you know, they can, you know, be typical black people, be black, you know, do black people stuff, but everybody there was just, you know, just there to have a good time. Just there, just enjoy the atmosphere, the music, um, the food. Um, the, yeah, everybody was, the, the waitresses are, are so nice. Um, yeah, there's they're all of them. Like, I haven't had a bad experience there. I've been there twice, so I don't know if anybody else has had a bad experience with the waitressing there or, or whatnot, but, and then the, you're surrounded by beautiful people. Like, there's so many beautiful black women waitressing that, that works there. Uh, it, it's men and also um um i don't see too many men working there but anyways it's, it's just a lot of you're just around a lot of beautiful people okay. I, 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 I like i loved it the, the spirits was just yeah it's amazing yeah, yeah and that's one of those cities where correct me if i'm wrong like it i mean i i feel like you know i told presence before on the previous episode I, I feel like there are certain quote-unquote stereotypes you know, like, um, especially the positive ones that are actually true. And I feel like Southern hospitality is like a real thing. Like mm -hmm. when I went to San Antonio, I got shown with nothing but love. I went to uh, New Orleans, nothing but love. Every time I visited, oh, yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, it's nothing but love. I, I, I feel like it sounds like from what you said, like, like, you know, just good music, good, you know, beautiful, you know, black people just trying to have a good time and enjoy food and camaraderie. It sounds like that's yet another, yet again, another example of, Southern hospitality just 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 being true. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. Like I said, you get your, you know, sometimes some somebody could be in a bad mood or you know, you get your every people you know once in a while that can be, you know, can have an attitude. But other than that, mm -hmm. for the majority, like, especially like the older folks, like I love like talking to them, hey baby, hey sugar. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, see, see I, I see I'm from um, I'm a <laughs> yeah, I'm originally from um, from um, Spartanburg, South Carolina, and um, that's the pretty much majority of my family's from South Carolina. And I swear, every time I go down there, I I, I could just be at the most random places. I run into somebody like, "Ain't you Carol, son? Ain't you Freddie boy?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, I'm Freddie's boy. That's me." You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, yeah, I'm Freddie's boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> but it's always like a, it's always an older person like, "You Carol, son? Ain't you?" I'm like, "Yes, yes, ma'am." <laughs> I kind of hear it because. People in the Carolinas, they kind of have an accent. And when you say Carolina, you have that accent. Like, I, I, I hear, yeah, Carolina. I don't know how they say it. But I, went to, I went to North Carolina. Okay. I've been there. Yeah. 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 They, they, they were nice there. They had a lot of nice people in North Carolina. Oh, yeah, North Carolina is dope. Well, I haven't seen his house yet, but my, my cousin moved to Charlotte um, a couple years ago. He's like, a, he got like a job as like an athletic director at like a school up there. But um, okay. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's just simply dope, man. So, so, like, what are some of like? Over, I mean, you hit on a little bit, like, one of the negatives of like, just like anywhere, in my opinion, you could run into a couple of people who may have like a bad day or bad mood. But overall, like, what are some of like the the, the pros and cons, in your opinion, with, with your experience in Houston? Like, awesome. I know, like, I know, for example, I guess one of con could be if you don't like hot weather, Houston might not be for you. Well, I, I was gonna say that. I mean, well, yeah, mm -hmm. I was gonna say that for an example, but for me, you know, I, I kind of like it. Um, I really don't like being cold. And then living in Germany, I've never driven in snow before. I'm like, what is, what is this? <laughs> like, I'm just terrorizing you. You're a terrorist on the road in Germany. <laughs> and, but anyways, um, yeah, but like I said, I, I, I like it, even though it's hot. Um, mm -hmm. you, you got pool parties, you know what I'm saying? But the con, the con, like, if you don't like heat or you don't like being too hot, I mean, that's, I feel like that's always adjustable, you know what I'm saying? You can always either go in in the house and cool down or wait till the sun goes. Like how you said when, when I was um in uh, D.C. Mm -hmm. so, ooh, let, let me, let's do something before the sun, before it gets really hot outside. Yeah. But, um. What about the traffic? That's what I was going to say. Yeah, so, um, you have... 290 can, can be kind of bad, but I-10 is really bad. Um, I, I witnessed that going to work, you know, in my, my younger teenage years. Mm -hmm. um, 610, ooh, 610 is really backed up. Mm -hmm. um, you, it, if I can compare it, if I can compare the, the traffic to a different city, like I would say, 
it's not as bad as Atlanta. And it's not as bad as, as, as LA or the, like how they say it is. Mm. Like, I, I don't think it's that bad. It's bad, but it's not like you sit in your car like for hours trying to go. Like, it, it's not it's not that bad, but traffic is it, it's bad, especially if you're in a hurry, you're in a rush. You know what I'm saying? Then you're impatient. Right. Then, yeah, it's bad, but traffic is not that bad. Um, I will say also it takes about 30 minutes to just get anywhere. Like, we don't have like, what I like about New York and other places is they have um, train subway stations mm-hmm. where, you know, you don't have to use your car. You can just, you know, go. But yeah. a lot of things are, like, so spread out. Like, it, it takes you a minute to get to somebody's house or it takes you a minute to go to, like, this is my one of my favorite restaurants is out the downtown area. For me, downtown area is, like, 30 minutes, like a 30-minute drive. Okay. Um, the mall is, like, a 25-minute drive. Like, a lot of stuff is, just like, so – spaced out. out but since i came back like they're building up a lot of stuff um now in houston and they were, i'm um vegetarian or vegan and so they've got a lot of those restaurants popping up now that i didn't know or wasn't aware of you know mm-hmm. um while i was gone um so they have a lot of those they have a lot of new restaurants in general coming up but before like me growing up in houston like, for me, I was like, man, I can't wait to get up out of Houston. It's so boring. It's so whack. But, you know, I was such, had such a limited you know, mind, state of mind that I didn't see what Houston had to offer. But um, it, it's, it's just slow. It, it's mm-hmm. slow here. It's not fast paced. Um, they took Asteroid. I, don't, I forgot the reason why. Astro, I know they have um, Six Flags in San Antonio and they have Six Flags in, you know, Atlanta, Georgia. Mm-hmm. But that was like the main attraction. Like people were like swarmed, like they were just drawn to that area. Um, everybody was there. Every, every summer, every summer you would go to Six Flags. But now that that's gone, it's just like, okay, What's what is that to do now? Like, you know, nothing. Mm-hmm. But um I've never been to Moody Gardens. I've heard a few of my friends, and I think my sister has been to Moody Gardens. Um, but I think they have a little bit of kind of like a theme park, amusement park type vibe to it. Um, and then you got Galveston Beach, and I wouldn't recommend nobody go there. But <laughs> the seawall, the seawall and the strips, like they have like, I think they got a Ferris wheel down there that you can ride. They have like little fun activities out there, people singing on the street and stuff like that on the little seawall. You can walk so many restaurants on that area, um, on that strip. Okay. You have um, a lot of nice e- eating places out there um, on the strip. So if you want to, like um, Preston said, um, he likes you know, to look at the scenic, you know, he's a very scenic person, like to, to take in the sights and views. Right. So, um, you know, if people want to, you know, if y'all want to go down there, um, you can, you know, people, a lot of people ride their bikes, scooters, um, people just get in just to go out there and just sit by the water, read a book or whatever. So, but getting in the water is, the water is terrible. It's, it's dirty. It's, it's dirty. <laughs> dirty water. That's what I'm trying to tell people. I, like, I don't do America, like, beaches, beaches. water. No, because once you've seen some other waters, you'd be like, no, I'm not getting into that, bro. Water's supposed to be clear, not murky, <laughs> you know, brown. I heard, I think either I heard this on the news or I read this somewhere, but they said, I think it was on the news. They said that, um, no, it was a Netflix. I went to documentaries. It was a Netflix documentary and they were saying that I think people from North Carolina, they're coming and taking their waste and dumping it into, you know, into Galveston's water. And I was like, what? Like, why are y'all doing that? Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I don't I don't know the reason why why that stuff is going on, but I can't remember the full detail of the documentary, but I know that they were saying they were taking certain hazardous waste and certain like waste and just ship it there. They don't have nowhere to put it. So they'll bring it and I somebody was trying to do a somebody was trying to do an interview mm-hmm. <clears throat> to somebody in Houston and they were like, Oh no, you can't record, you know, we can't have anybody, you know, record here. This is private property, blah blah blah. Right. You know, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that. Cause I was always, I, you always wonder like why things are so dirty, you know, but you know, you don't, can never really find the answer, mm-hmm. but um, I never think to like, to like look, look it up. Right, right, right. But, um, 
Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, Preston. Yeah, you want. <laughs> yeah, I mean, on a, on a quick side note, quick side note, cause I mean, y'all need to you don't mess with uh, American beaches, and we can get to it at another episode. But a very quick uh, side note: I don't know what Miami is doing to their water, but that Miami beach looks like it's like clear island, you know, ocean beach water over there. Like, you know, I ain't never been to Miami either. Miami, so. LA. Yeah, clear water out there, but um, so it's clear, but clear to like, yeah, clear to American standards. No, no, that's uh, not clear. Like, like if you, if, if I take a picture, I'm going to Miami tomorrow, and if yeah. that shit ain't clear, when I yeah. can't, yo, you could take a picture, no you could take a picture of Miami water, and like, don't label it. You, you, I bet you couldn't tell the difference from like another ocean, like for real. It's it's, it's clear. Okay, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm it, mind to confirm it's that. not clear to Mexico, so I'll say that because I've been to Mexico, I've been to Cancun, and mm-hmm. it was a little bit more clear <laughs> than in Miami because I've been to Miami Beach and I lived in Florida. Okay, I went to um St. Petersburg to their to their beach out there too. Okay, it's nice. I love that their sand is is like white sand. It's it's, it's pretty out there. Mm-hmm. But um <clears throat> yeah, it's not as clear as like Cancun or Mexico and stuff. Exactly, Ryan. You made it seem like. Shit, you go here, you feel like you're on another world. <laughs> I mean, you know, I hyped it. I, I, no, it's still America. Now. It I, might feel, be- I, I get what he's saying. No, I, I, yeah, I definitely get what you're saying. Yeah, it's, it's nice, though. It's nice. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm sure it is better than, like, I lived in Jersey. That water was gross, bro, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. I get what you're saying as far as, like, you've been to Virginia Beach or... Uh, yeah, I've been to Virginia Beach. Up in uh, Maryland, there, but... Uh, Ocean Ocean City. City. Yeah, not, not the cleanest. Bro, I don't even get in that water, bro. I be like, oh, I don't want mud on me. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's what it looks like. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, I, I mean, I understand what you're saying as far as America goes. If you had to go to an American beach and to, to feel like, okay, I made some you know, decently clean water, yeah. you probably hit your LA or, you know Miami. what I'm saying? Or your Miami. You know, I, yeah. I get that part, but. True, true. People, but people here in Houston, like, they still get in that water, though. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like even when we were little, like my parents would take us there and we would get in the water. Girls were like, oh, no, we're having fun, we're at the beach, you know? You're, you're, you're young, you know, you know, you just want to go outside and play in the water. So, right. yeah, we used to get in that water and they had jellyfish in there and um, crabs in there and stuff like that. But yeah, you wouldn't want to go. That's uh, another con of um, living in Houston. But they do have, um, I think it's called Surfside, that's a nicer beach. Okay. That is a nicer beach. I remember there, um, the whole atmosphere, the whole vibe there, that, that feels a little better than um, Galveston. But <clears throat> I can't remember if they have like a, a strip like um, Galveston's does, but the water is a whole lot cleaner over there. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. I got a, a question, and maybe I don't know if you want to put this in a pro or con category or Courtney, but uh. And I'll give a quick example before my question. Uh, well, pretty much, I'll give my question first. Like, what's your opinion as far as, like, the cost of living out there in Houston? And before you answer, just, like, a quick example, me and Preston, we not even a debate. We actually kind of agree on this. To a quick example, if you go to the National Harbor, yeah, you, you, you want to make sure that your paycheck, you know, came through when you go to National Harbor. Because if you're out there for a couple hours, you're going to pay for parking. If you want, like, a decent meal, you know, especially for like, you know, if for you or a friend or you or a significant other, that's at least 50 bucks minimum. This like, stuff just adds up really quick if you're trying to go out and have a good time in certain places of the, of the DMV area. So with that example, like, do you, do you feel like the cost of living is like more of a pro or con in Houston? Like, it's, it think, it, go out, have a good time. Is that pretty affordable in your opinion? Yeah, people from like... LA and New York, those high cost living places are moving to Houston, you know the cost of living is a whole lot better than, you know, all those other cities because um, for me, I'm living in a one bedroom apartment. It's spacious and it's enough for me and it's only $740. A month? Yeah, so you live in the uh, hood? Because that's what it would be here. They'd be like, oh, I got this one bedroom for 700 they're going to be like, are you okay? Or assistance? <laughs> you know, people are like, are you getting welfare? Because that's exactly the next question is going to be, are you jobless? <laughs> but no, but uh, 740 for a spacious one-bedroom apartment, that's, Bro, you know, that, that sounds beautiful. I'm going to tell you right now, I got a homeboy right now. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to say no name, but I got a homeboy. 
this dude, he out here paying, not even for one bedroom, for a studio, about two grand a month. Now see, that's, that's that BS right there, man. Come on now. Two grand for a studio. I'm trying to I'm trying to move to um uh, um to San Diego, California. I might be going to school out there, and looking at their apartments, Ooh. a studio, yeah, yeah, a studio, the studio's are high. Mm. Yeah, and I'm sitting there like this is crazy, and it's like when you are in it and you immersed in it, and that's all you know. You don't really think. I mean, you you have like a relative idea of oh, this is kind of expensive, but you just kind of used to it. And that's what happened. So me living in the D.C. area for like years upon years. Next thing I know, you know, I get stationed on these other places and I start thinking like, damn. I could live like a god out here, you know what I'm saying? Like, I remember when I was stationed in Oklahoma one time and, um, and literally like, you know, if you wanted to say to go to a club or something, they'd be like, man, it's five dollars. Five dollars, that's it? <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's just like something must be wrong with this place. But it'd be like the most popular place in that little city or whatever. And they'd be like five, ten dollars. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, where we came from, if you went to the club, the only way it'd be twenty dollars is if you got there like nine o'clock. You're talking about like the club in DC, right? Yeah, like club in DC. Like if you get there at nine, yeah, it might be twenty. Mm -hmm. But if you get there like say 10, 11 o'clock, oh 40. you're 30, 40 in, like trying to get in. Oh, and, and, yeah. <clears throat> and don't don't try to go to a club, you know, and it's like how a homecoming weekend. Oh shit, you paying eighty? <laughs> yeah, 80, 80 to hundred just to get in the spot. Just to get in that same club that you got in last week that was only twenty. Exactly. I'm telling you, man. Like, so let's say, like, hey, we all three go out, right? And they say, hey, man, first round on me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm sixty dollars in. I'm sixty to seventy dollars <laughs> in three drinks. Because every drink is gonna be fifteen. To Perth? twenty dollars, yeah. literally. Mm -hmm. Like, and don't get fancy and be like, well, "I want top shelf." Okay, sir, you have just raised the bar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I mean, like, so that's why, like, in the last say three or four years, when we go out, uh, first of all, we don't go, we don't go to clubs anymore. We go like go like a you know like a lounge or something, or just yeah. like a bar. But we just get beer. We'd be like, "Yo, let's get a picture of beer." I get the first picture. The first picture of beer is going to give about at least six cups of beer. And you'd be like, hey, it only cost me 20 some dollars. So you feel like, oh, well, I got my money's worth. And then the next person, I'm going to get a picture of beer. Now we good. You know what I'm saying? But, like, you think you're going to sit there and get Long Islands and all these fancy margaritas? Nah, bro. Unless you want to spend $100, $200. Mm -hmm. With the drinks, I never really bought. Um, cause whenever we're out in the group, it'd always be, you know, dude getting a drink or whatever. He'll just, you know, get always one. Drink. Always one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the dudes always, you know, get the females a drink. So we, I never really, like, I said, oh, I, let me get this. Yeah, but um, <laughs> but pretty much, yeah, the cost of like the cost of living, like that's another reason why I moved back home is because I wanted to save money, <clears throat> and get myself out of debt, and I've been able to do that. Been able to go to school, um, and just focus on that. Which is, a, which is a blessing. Um, so grateful for the military, so grateful. But um, yeah, the cost of living, like, it's so, so cheap out here. Um, a big, well, of course, you know, you have your typical measures like five million, you know, seven million or whatever, but you still have, you, you can get a lot of house for a little bit of money. That's pretty much what I'm trying to say. If I ever move to the South, I literally would probably, you know what I'm saying? Let's just say if I just wanted to be like ignorant with it. And I'd be like, man, I think I want 9,000 square foot. I still feel like I could probably get that for less than like 700,000. Probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 So right here, if you want, if you want like, you know, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand, and you're getting close to that million dollar range. Oh, hell yeah. If not a million. I mean, it, they got houses out here that's like, 2,000 square foot, right? But depending on that zip code, you might pay $1.5, $2 million just for 2,000 square foot. That's crazy to me. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. And you got a lot of spaces with these houses. And I'm kind of thinking about like moving to like a country area just to be like, you know, out and have that all that open space to yourself. Yeah. Um, been able to like, you know, plant gardens and stuff. I mean, I'm getting into that. But um. 
I like ATVs too. I've been seeing like a lot of people that have ATVs that they riding around their neighborhood and stuff like that. I was like, dang. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> a lot of these houses, like I said, like you can get a nice house for like one hundred fifty thousand, like a, a nice house, mm -hmm. and even, probably even for like a hundred thousand, like a decent one, like in the hood, you can get a decent one for like a probably a hundred thousand, and it still be nice. You're just like. Dang, and, and it shocks me when I go to other places when I like look at other people's cost of living and what a one bedroom or a studio apartment is. I'm just like, dang, how do these how do some of these people move out of their parents' houses? Like, yeah. especially when it's hard to find a job. Like, how do you do that? Like, in Houston, yeah. Houston it's a little bit more easier to to get around. Yeah, yeah. To your point, my um my same cousin lived in Charlotte and and my homeboy um Jay Preston, who you met in, in South Carolina. They both got houses, like you said, around that mid, maybe late 100,000 marks at the highest. And they got like nice single family homes, you know what I'm saying? But me being mm -hmm. in Maryland, I had to pay a little around twice as that as, as yeah. for, the, for the same type of, you know, size house, all that. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it is some BS. But I, you know, it's just the, this is the area that we in or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So it's, I don't know, it's all relative because, you know, like you said, like, if I can make the same amount of money I make and I can live in the South, I do that. I might be inclined to leave this place. You know what I'm saying? But uh Heck yeah. I don't know. Like I said, you know, my wife's uh me, I don't care. I can go anywhere. I don't even want to be in America, to be honest with you, when it comes to certain That's things. That's how I feel. That's how I feel, man. Yeah. So I look at it as like I wouldn't mind living overseas or whatever. When I mean living, I mean like living, living. Like, okay, I'm not. I can see, I can see back. you going back over there. I can see that. Yeah, so I wanted to actually I had a, um, I had a job in Germany this year to go back. I was supposed to be in Germany for five years, five more years as, as a civilian, <laughs> but uh, I turned it down for my current job. But um, you know, it's just so much cheaper. Like. Even though Germany got some crazy like taxes as far as like, I mean, they're like 19% tax or some crazy, but stuff is still cheap. And the tax is included in the price. So they don't believe in like, oh, this is $1.99, but really you're gonna pay 276. Nah, bro, like if this says $1.99 or one or whatever, one euro 99 cent, that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to worry about all this conversion and carry the one and all that stuff. So. And it's like, man, they don't have really big houses out there. Like, they, they're very like, oh, I can get this studio size, whatever, and live like, you know, live pretty good. Basement. Yeah, like, because they don't really have, like, I mean, I, I mean I'm, sure, I'm sure they got millionaires and all that, whatever, but the average person just like, you know, they just got a decent car and they got a, you know, decent place to live and they're good. Like, you know, they're not making six grand a month or something like that. I mean, you know, they look at us and be like, damn, y'all wasteful. You know what I'm saying? Because, because you know, Germany, like, they have, they they are all about their space. Like, remember, though, the parking spaces are so, are so small, like, they they try to use everything to the best of their ability. Like, they, they make room, they make time, they make, you know, yeah, they're good out there when it comes to that, yeah. It's crazy, because I'm telling you, like, I don't really, really remember a, a, a place that had like disgruntled workers like mcdonald's or whatever they don't look disgruntled you know what i'm saying because they get time off like they don't work on they close everything on sundays damn near you know uh they get off early on. i mean because stuff closes early in europe like in europe i mean you don't find a lot of places that just open up to 10 11 o'clock at night you know what i'm saying besides like you know maybe like a mcdonald's or something yeah but for the most part i mean it's clean you know even when you're driving around, man, like you can see the stars. You be like, oh shit, the constellation. You come in America and be like, damn, it's you know your chest hurt and shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's, uh, that's the only reason I probably moved to like. I thought about Texas because of obviously you guys don't pay no state taxes either. Um, so I was like, ooh, let's save me more money. But you know what I'm saying? I just can't. I can't do Texas only on the strength of everything is so spaced out. Like, and I'm not used to that. Like, where you be like, oh, I'm in Houston, but I want to go to Dallas. Okay, sir, you got to put leave in because that's like eight hours up the road. Or, no, it's not. well, I'm just, I'm just saying in general, like a lot of yeah. places are spaced out, though. You know, where it might be four, this, how, how long will it take you to get to Dallas from Houston? Three and a half, three and a half four hours. Well, okay, so you say four. So what about San Antonio? 
I just came from there. San Antonio took about, I was about three. Well, That's um, it was almost three. It was two and a half. It was two and a half. Yeah. So, I, you know what I'm saying? So, like, places I just, like, because I got a homeboy right now. He's in El Paso. I told him I was going to come and visit him. Now, that's far. That's, that's, that's far, right? But he'd be like, yeah, I got to go to Dallas. It's eight hours. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, eight hours? Oh, he'd be like, I'm going to go to Houston, man. But that's damn near 24. I know he'll say some crazy number. I'd be like, oh, no, bro. I can't. When I got to start thinking about airports to go places just to visit, Nah, man, and I, I'm not, I'm, and I'm not a driver either. So, oh, anything, my God. yeah, anything over two, I start being like, "Yo, we got another driver." Yeah, like, like bro, <laughs> <laughs> <See you next time>. <laughs> <laughs> who's gonna get in on some of these miles? Because you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that's the one thing about you know the East Coast. We don't have a lot of space. Everything, yes. everybody stacked on top of each other. Yeah. Obviously, the further away you get from, say, DC or Baltimore or whatever, then you start getting a little bit more of a space. So that's the reason why I chose to where I want to like, okay, I'm close to D.C., but I'm still, like, on the outskirts of it where if I want to go to D.C., I can just, okay, I'll go to D.C., you know? Right. I'm so used to living in Houston that when I think about the surrounding cities around me, I'm like, oh, that's not far. Like, I'll take, you know, a drive to Dallas or I'll go to San Antonio or uh, what else is around here? Uh, Austin. You know, stuff like that. I'm thinking, to me, you know what I'm saying? But like you said, I get what you're saying, too. You're used to, like, the closeness and, the, you know, being able to take a train somewhere or something like that and not being able to have to drive. But, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you're going to have to make that drive. Three hours for us, like, say, for me right now, three hours. Three hours, I could be in Jersey. You know, three hours, I'm in Jersey. You know, two and a half, I'm in Philly. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in a whole other state. It's the same. It's the same, but I'm going to a whole other state. Now, I'm not in my same state. Oh, like, well, you in, yeah, 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 yeah. I get you know, it. I'm in my same state, and I'm like, all right, 17 hours later, yeah, yeah. look to the other side of it, like, damn, you know what I'm saying? So that's what my whole thing is, like, because where I'm from, even like D.C. to Philly to Jersey to New York is all within four, four and a half hours, right? Yeah. You got that stretch, right? But they're all different states, cities, whatever. Like, the vibe is totally different. Which, I granted, I think Houston and San Antonio get a different vibe, but in my mind, it's still the same state, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah. So, like, when I go to, like, New York, I got to be on my New York stuff. I got to be, like, you know, I got to be on paid in full. You know what I'm saying? Let's hey, yo, this is a movie. That's hey, yo, a movie. Hey, yo, B, what you talking? You mad crazy oh, right hey, now. Hey, yo, son. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta do a lot of clapping. Yeah, for yeah. no front street. Front street. You know what I'm saying? I gotta put no front street, God. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> and that's just how it is. You know, if I go to like Philly, I, I know I'm gonna be on that Meek Mill shit. You know what I'm saying? So what? it's just that type of it's just that type of thing. So um, I think that would be a con for me as far as the spacing, because I do, especially now when I want to travel and experience more things, that I think I would just get frustrated with the whole. All right, I got to pack a damn suitcase just to go, you know, up to the city. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm definitely like want to do some more traveling, especially in the states. But um, like a drive to New Orleans, Louisiana, like I love to go down there, but that's like a six-hour drive from here to Houston. So I yeah. get what you're saying, cause like that's like put in leave type thing and spend a weekend out there, cause you don't have to turn around and come back. But yeah, like. like so, like, if I just decide to say, man, I think I'm going to go to Baltimore. Okay, an uh, hour and a half later, I'm in Baltimore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can come right back the same day. Or if I say, I think I'm going to go to Richmond. An hour later, I'm in Richmond. Let and me go. Think, like, if you're driving out of Texas, like, Houston is so big that it takes forever to get out of. Houston <laughs> a long time to get out. Man, we, go, we drove, me and a friend, we had drove to Miami for you Thanksgiving because – Yes, because you got family out there. Mm. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm tall, so I got long legs. So being cramped up in the back seat, like, <laughs> oh, man, it was horrible. But to get out of Houston alone, I can't remember. It was like, I think about, I don't even want to exaggerate. I can't remember, honestly. I don't want to exaggerate, but I think it was about at least eight hours to get out of Houston. Like, it was a lot. Out of Houston, out of the city. Well, I mean, out of, out of Texas, out of oh, Texas. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, 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 yeah, out of Texas. Out of Texas, all right. And that's what I'm saying, man. Like, I just, for me, I, I don't think, I think that, it's like, if I was moving to Texas, I'm like, yo, I'm not leaving my state. I mean, I'm not leaving my city, unless it's on a flight. 
that's where I would have to come to the realization of that because that's what I do because I be wanting to visit a lot of my friends in the military, man. Like got friends in LA. A friend wanted me to come out there. Um I visited my homegirl out in a in DC area. And then um I got a friend at uh Fort Steel. Um and then I got a friend that's moving out to uh South Korea to you know Korea, that military base out there. And it's like, man, like I, I have, of course that overseas you have to fly, but like here, like for I don't want to drive there. I got people in um, Fort Hood, which is which is not far, but I still, I'm still don't want to drive there. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's what, and that's so like I said, I got to think about in far as my lifestyle goes, it would have to definitely be one an international airport has to be nearby. Two, weather don't really bother me because weather changes. You know what I'm saying? That's a passing thing, whatever. Um, but definitely, I would say airport. I would say traffic is something I probably have to think about. And then, like, say, like, you know, cost of living or whatever. But my laptop about to die. Let me get my um my charger. Uh -huh. But yeah, I ain't messing with it. I'm gonna be like, mm -mm. <laughs> no, because I'm like, because you already know how traffic is. You can't just say on a whim, "Hey man, I'm gonna come through." Hell no, nah. you got crap. Yeah, we gotta yeah, get yeah. snacks. We gotta, you gotta go get water. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can't roll. You can't roll out of bed and just be like, I'm out of business. Oh no, no, man, you ain't gonna roll out of bed at 11. Talk about so I'm gonna come see you at 12. Hell no. Nah. <coughs> like it probably take me through. Like, like I was telling the court, like you know what I'm saying? Hey, oh, you wanna go to DC? Okay, cool. Give me three days notice because goddamn it, I gotta, I gotta backwards plan this. I gotta, make, I gotta wake up at six in the morning. I gotta, you know. Damn, they get on the road by eight to get there at twelve. Like it's crazy, you know. It's crazy traffic over in this area. So yeah, but yeah, yeah. I definitely um understand that and whatever. But uh, Houston do sound exciting. Just thinking about all the music videos I've seen. And you know what? I I forgot to mention this. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know if they have it. I know they got it in like the, the East Coast, New York area. Um, but the food trucks. Whew. Oh, they got a lot of food trucks. Man. A lot of times you find a lot of the um, taquerias, the little Mexican ones, the, you get the authentic taco. You know what I'm saying? I don't like that, that Taco Bell hard shell. That's not the real taco. <laughs> She's not like the authentic taco. Right, right. You need the authentic taco. And they give you that, <laughs> that, that sauce that you put on. And it, that's an experience as well. Just being able to like, you driving down the road and you hungry. And, or you could be, I don't know, it, just any situation you could think of, you just driving down and you're like, ooh, I'm hungry. Ooh, let's get some tacos. Like, it could be right there, right there next to a gas station. You need gas. There's a taco, there's a taco stand right there. Or um, right. they're being on the side of the street somewhere. Like, th those are the best. Those taco stands are the best. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's oh, how it is Philly. Like, you know, I mean, even though there's more well known spots in Philly, like Geno's or something like that, but to yeah. me, the best uh, Phillies. Be them little dudes with the like they don't you know just been cooking all day on this one grill you know they haven't cleaned it in three years so you tasting everybody's feeling that they didn't have pre previous to yours but, but the food be fire though the food be fire though <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I'm saying so I I can appreciate that too because I do like I said that's the reason why I want to go to like the Texas or your uh, Californians or that for that authentic you know Mexican food or whatever because I went to Mexico. Uh, me and my wife and shit, we got that thing eating good, and it was cheap too. So we was oh, yeah. ordering like four meals every night, and just not even giving a damn about eating it all. We be like, it was so inexpensive. We were just like, well, I want, I want to taste how this taco tastes. Or I want to taste how this, you know, whatever tastes. You know what I'm saying? So we did that like every night. So we just to try different foods, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so that, yeah, that whatever. But I, I love Mexican. Food. I love Hispanic food in general. Yes, like, yes, I love yes. That. Thank I mean, you I, Oh my gosh, I can go. That's what I'm saying. I could be rich. I was rich right now. I'd be like, let me, man, let me go ahead and fly in with my mask and go. And get you know Look, my favorite is like breakfast burritos. Like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they be hooking that thing up. But I, I, um, also, like, this the Hispanic culture is so big, so huge, you know, in, in Texas, period. But um, what I will say is like, they have like the little towns that like, you have like your, your little Mexican town here, then they have Chinatown. 
and uh, I just re- I never really been in Chinatown because it was always kind of far mm-hmm. um, from wherever we lived. Okay. Um, Chinatown, like um, I have all your different you know Chinese restaurants in that area. Your your Chinese market or your Chinese like they have this, like a little shopping mall that I've that I've been to and they have like different little Chinese stores in there. I mean, if you want to get a massage, you want to um different restaurants or like different antiques or whatever that that, that, that they have to offer. Um clothes. And then um somebody recently told me about Cajun town. I never even knew we had a Cajun <laughs> town. I'm like what where have I been? Like I was really in my own little world when I was growing up in Houston, but um, I heard Cajun Town is kind of like you know, what you when you was like what you think of when you hear Cajun, seafood, crawfish, Creole type you know stuff. But okay. I haven't been there, but I, I yeah I definitely want to go and see what that is like. But I'm pretty sure they probably got like, um, what you call it, um, ready already made neck bones and um, oxtails and. Stuff like that. They probably still got that, got that stuff like you know made to go. You order it and you know take it out. But I haven't been like I said. But I definitely want to go and see what it's like and see what other shops they have around besides just food. But right. Um, yeah, that, I like that about Texas how they have the Cajun town, the um, the Asian side, the Mexican side, and you know, we have Caucasians everywhere. But. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice to have your, you know, own little bitty you know, little town. It's cool. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Like I, said, I mean, you make uh, Houston sound like a place to, you know, if, I mean, if not to live, at least to go and experience a whole lot, you know what I'm saying? And I'm definitely, like I said, I'm coming. Um, and like I said, definitely next year. I mean, I have plans for this year, but it's, it's yeah. just a wrap for I me. Will, I think we already talked about it, the, the, how, how, how they talk here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. It's something about the Texas slang and how they talk. It's very slow. Not very slow, but it's just, it's so country. Country, yeah. mixed, with, country mixed with a little bit of ghetto. So <laughs> a, lot of the, a lot of the phrases you hear people saying is, no, nah, I'm talking about, or yeah, I'm talking already. About. <laughs> already. You already know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that. It's like, because it's, I, I say that now because when I lived here, I'm like, we don't have accents. What you talking about? But when I joined the military, people would ask me, where are you from? I'm like, Houston. I'm like, oh, yeah, you, you sound different. I'm just like, what? <laughs> like, how? We don't even have, it was, we talk normal. But mm-hmm. then when I, when I came back and I moved back to Houston, I'm just like, dang, he country? I'm like, I'm like, you really sound like that? Okay. <laughs> like, no, no way, no way. He sounds so country. It's going down. Going down, <laughs> going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's style. Yeah, going that's down. Thing. I was trying to say, and that's the beauty of the military. You know, you get around other cultures and be like, "What the hell are you talking about?" You know, especially you know all the slang from different areas and stuff like that. Um, it could be a bit much because I know, you know, now I don't talk like you know millennials or whatever now. So I think now it's starting to bleed over now because now I can't tell when rappers come out. I'd be like, "Who the hell is they from? I don't know where they're from. I just be like, oh Atlanta. Yeah, I, I yeah, I think it's Atlanta. Yeah, I think it's bleeding over because like I swear, you know, I hope it don't get any negative traction, but A Boogie from the hoodie with a hoodie. I thought it was from like Atlanta or something like that. Or it's from Jersey, right? Or some from like Brooklyn or some people. Somewhere from North. I couldn't so tell. I say like like you know, um like you said, like A Boogie with a hoodie and uh what's that dude that Mo Mambo that uh Mo Bamba. Yeah, no mama, whatever, Shock West, whatever. Yeah, Shock West. They from New York. <laughs> you know, uh, ASAP Rocky and all them, they all from like Harlem. I couldn't tell. Shit. You know what I'm saying? So, the got, South. The yeah. South run this, man. No, or, or, or y'all messed it up. We, we can go either direction. We can say the South messed it up, or, you know what I'm saying? But I, I do no, like. No, the South didn't mess it up. We added that culture, but now y'all gravitated toward it. So y'all taking and using our stuff. Like yeah. the dances and stuff. We can't even put all them dances in that y'all see people doing. Yeah, I, I, I forgot. Man, I forgot how long ago it was, but um, there was an interview where Ace Rocky admitted that he liked how Houston really, you know, had like a resurgence hitting the rap scene. Like he said, like when Mike Jones and still that still Tipper video came on, 
Aesop Rocky said he got inspired by that. Oh, I'm I'm paraphrasing, but he oh, did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that one song was cool. <laughs> I had um I had a friend that I well, I have a friend that's from Brooklyn, and he told me it's totally different now. He's like it just became so southernized now, and um and I believe it because it's just when you come down to this, it's so infectious. Like I've been to the other places in the South, like um you know being in Miami, but they're there's like their Florida like in Florida their southernness is different from our southernness. Oh yeah, yeah. It doesn't I mean, work, yeah. but you know like. You know, so for like Texas, Louisiana, uh, <laughs> Alabama, Georgia, like it's just so in infectious. Like it, it, like you said, y'all are like curious about how Houston is. Y'all want to come, y'all want to come, y'all want to visit, y'all want to experience it. Like mm -hmm. what y'all, pretty much what y'all see on TV, what y'all hear in the, in the music, you're going to get that when you come here, especially when you, when you go to, when you some people like when they travel here, they like to go to the hood spots. You can go to the hood spots or you can go to the nice, you know, some you know, other areas, you know, where there's more upscale and stuff like that. But um I would rather work, go to where more of the culture is and you know the action and stuff like that. Yeah. Going to a nice lounge and um, you know, going to a we we got a lot of bars too. We got a, a lot of good bars. Um but yeah, I just our southern is it, it we're just it's just different. It's just different, and I think that's why a lot of people have taken um, the music and the slang and putting it in there. It's because even like I'm um, a few LA rappers, like I'm, I'm kind of hearing their music too. I'm just like some of them, yeah. Okay. Ot Genesis got got like a, something southern a little bit about him, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Or southern influence. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I will say this, at least I guess. One of my final thoughts on Houston, like, I will say at least, like I said, my, my, my window into Houston, like you said, was like the rap videos of, of rappers hitting the scene and stuff like that. Like, I know Ghetto Boys and Scarface and all of them came out. I was a little younger back then. I'm still familiar with the music. I was a little younger, but like, like when the Still Tipping videos came on, the Three Kings, you know, Bun B, UGK and all that, like, that's really what, you know, um, I, bottom line, I just think. Houston has a way of taking like a simple idea and just making it dope. Like, like the uh, still tipping video, I swear they just like, yo, we're just going to pull up to like a, a let out at a club and we're just going to, um, can you hear me, bro? No, no, I can hear. I was just thinking, hey, you just brought me back with the still tipping. Oh, I was but like, no. Oh yeah. But like, <laughs> like, I swear like the director, <laughs> like, yeah, I, I swear. Travis Scott got a lot of good, he's from Houston. He got a yeah. lot of good video. He's yeah, very okay. creative. Mm -hmm. I swear, like, directors be like, yo, we're just going to go to a letter at the club and bring the cameras and, and women and rappers. And then that's going to be our still tipping video. That's going to be our Three Kings video. No, that video was wild, bro. That that video was something else. Tell that's from BET had uncut. Yeah. yeah I remember <laughs> that. So, so, so yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. I like Houston. Uh, for, you know, what I know about it, like, so my cousin goes down there twice a month. And he, you know, talks highly of it, whatever. And and it's that's not a big stress from St. Louis to Houston as far maybe the, the hospitality part, mm -hmm. but you know as far as just I guess that countryness of things as far as the way we talk or whatever, right. um, probably the way we dress at least back then at least um, I think I think we more or less dressed like more like people from the West South or whatever as far as. I you know back then it wasn't a big deal to be like oh I wear Gucci every day or I gotta wear Fendi every day. Yeah. That was more to me like an East Coast thing. Uh, yeah, East Coast is all about flashiness. Woo. And like so, when I was growing up, to you know, white tee, some 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 dickies or whatever the case may be, some jeans or whatever, and then you're good. But then when I moved to the East Coast, it was like, nah, bro, that ain't gonna work here. You gotta spend half your paycheck on this one <laughs> shirt, and and that's just what it was. You know, what I'm saying it wearing this is like I said, this is the '90s, but. People out here wearing neon green and neon orange. And I was like, God damn, it's bright up here. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I, you know, I grew up with people having gold teeth and, you know, fronts and, you know, permanents and shit like that. So, I mean, I still got family members like aunts, aunt, everybody. They got, they slugged up, as they say. And uh, that's just what I, you know, at least, at least I was used to. So I don't know if I come to Houston, I got to go get me a pair. But I do appreciate you coming on and stuff, you know, and, you know, and uh, definitely like want to get you back on here and talk about other places. Because like I said, 
Um, you know, like I said, I ain't never been to Seattle. Uh, um, so I don't know if you, um, I mean, I've, been to, I've never been to really the West Coast. I mean, I've been to California only for NTC purposes. Right. But, um, but I definitely want to talk about more places. And like I said, you was in Germany, so you'll be a good person to talk to. And, and it's trying to pick your brain as far as other cities, all the countries that you've been to. Yeah. And uh, especially when, I, if I've been there, because I can get my, my take on it, you know, yeah. and then you can collab like that. Um, I'm trying to get Ryan out of the country a little bit more. Uh, yeah. He's not, you know, he's like something about the country one time. He's he out here slipping. Um, <laughs> That's so, true. Yeah, we definitely going to do that. He's going to get there. Yeah, I'm going to get there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going to get there, all right. He's going to bring his ass with I me. Pass for a stamp, baby. Yeah, you're right. So, I need to get that. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, we definitely going to do that. And uh, like I said, appreciate it. Yeah. My, my pleasure. Thank you. Right. Cool. No problem. Appreciate it. All right. Peace. All right.